Hey guys, so now that we have a basic understanding of what momentum is and how it works, I want to introduce you to a new concept that's related to momentum and it's called impulse. I'll show you what impulse is and how it ties to momentum. Let's check it out. So first I want to show you to get started that Newton's second law, Newton's second law is F equals MA, can be rewritten in terms of momentum. Check this out. So sum of all forces equals MA. Instead of writing A, I'm going to write the definition of A, which is a change in velocity over change in time. So I'm going to replace it here, delta V over delta T. And now I'm going to move the V inside of the delta. You can do that. It's cool. Um, so the delta now has an MV inside of it, delta T. And now that you know what momentum is, hopefully you identify, you notice that this is actually momentum, P equals MV. So I can rewrite this as delta P over delta T. So the idea is that F equals MA can be written here like this, or it can be written like this. And this is actually Newton's original definition. When Newton figured out F equals MA, he actually didn't write it as F equals MA. He wrote it in terms of changing momentum over change of time. Uh, we just learn it this way first because it's simpler, right? I hope you'll agree that this is simpler than this, okay? So, but you can write it this way. So, by rearranging this new version, F equals delta P over delta T, we get a new physical quantity. Let me show you. Sum of all forces equals delta P over delta T. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the delta T over here. So, it's going to look like this. Sum of all forces delta T equals delta P. This thing here equals the change in momentum and we're going to give it a name. When you apply a force on something over a certain amount of time, right, there's a box, you push it for five seconds, that is called impulse and it's given by the letter J, okay? So the new physical quantity we're talking about is impulse, which is given by the letter J. Why J? I don't know. I suspect it's because they had already assigned I to something else. I is moment of inertia, the next letter is J. Okay, so J is defined as F delta T and it causes a change in momentum. So that's sort of the full equation for J. It's going to get a little bit more, a little bit longer in just a bit. But I want to make a quick point here that J equals or is defined as, that's the definition of J. Sometimes definitions are shown in terms of like a three dash equal sign. It's equal to and defined as, um, but it causes, it causes a change in momentum. So impulse is force times time and it causes a change in momentum. Um, this is similar to work. Now I have a little asterisk here because depending on the sequence that your book takes or your professor takes, you may or may not have seen work yet. Most of you will already have covered work and energy uh, and then you'll be able to understand this analogy. Uh, work is force times delta x. Now it's F delta X cosine of theta, but this is the simpler version, F delta X. And it's defined as this. And it causes a change in kinetic energy. Causes a change in kinetic energy. So I hope you can see how these are similar. If you push something with a force of 10 for five seconds, that's impulse. If you push with a force of 10 for five meters, it's work. One causes a change in momentum, and remember, momentum is mv, and the other causes a change in kinetic energy, and if you've seen this, kinetic energy is half mv squared. You might even notice how these things are similar, uh, these two guys here are similar to each other, okay? So these two, I like to put them side by side so you can see that they look very similar, might help you remember how this stuff works. But we're not going to be talking about work or energy in this chapter. So or at least not for a while. So because impulse can be written in two ways, impulse can be written like this or like this, then it's gonna have two sets of units and they're gonna be equivalent sets of units. So force is measured in newtons and time in seconds. And then the other way is the change in momentum. Change in momentum has units of momentum, kilograms, meters per second. Now, Newton, Newtons, F equals MA is measured in Newtons. One Newton is the equivalent of a kilogram times meters per second squared. So if you replace Newton with all of this here and then multiply by S, I'm not going to do it because it doesn't matter that much, um, you'll see that you end up with exactly this. So if you're curious, you can check for yourself 
um, or you can just trust me that that's how it works. Um, those two sets of units are identical, uh, not identical, but they're equivalent. So you can use whichever one. I'm going to use NS just because it's less writing to do. Okay. So let's do an example here. And then I have a practice problem for you guys. So a 50 kilogram crate is initially at rest. Let's draw this 50 kilogram crate initially at rest um, on a smooth, no friction, horizontal surface. And then you push on it with a constant horizontal 100 newtons. 100 newtons is a force. It's a constant force, and it's a horizontal force. F equals 100. For eight seconds, so I'm going to say that it goes from here to here. And the time between these two points is eight seconds. So here, the initial velocity is 0. Here, there's some sort of final velocity, which is what we want in part B. What is the final velocity? But the first part is asking for the impulse. Again, impulse isn't I. There are a few books, uh, very few, that use I as impulse, but a vast majority of books are going to use J. Um, so what is J, the impulse that you deliver to the crate? You're giving impulse to the crate, kind of like as if you were giving energy to the crate, but it's not energy. It's impulse. It's force over time or force for a period of time. Um, force for a certain period of time. So. Let's do this. The way to calculate this is J is, I'm going to show you now the expanded version of the J equation that I slightly uh, quickly hinted at earlier. So J is F delta T. There's not much I can do here. And it's also delta P. Now I'm going to expand delta P. The delta operator means final minus initial. So it's going to be P final minus P initial. I'm going to make this really long, then I'm going to make it a little shorter, so don't freak out. Um, P is mv, so p final is mv final, minus mv initial. If the mass doesn't change, which in 99% of the problems it won't change, so you're good there, you can combine the masses by factoring out the m, and it's going to look like this. Okay, so I know what you're thinking, wow, this is crazy, it's a long equation, but it's really this, 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 and then this whole thing was just to get you to the simpler version, which you should know how to go from delta p to this. So in most of the impulse problems, as you see, uh, as I solve them, I'm going to write sort of this longer version to include this and this. The reason for that is because impulse problems will give you a different combination of variables. And if you have this whole thing laid out, it's easier for you to see which way to go. Okay, so here, I want impulse, I want J. And what do I have? Do I have F and T? Do I have delta P? Do I have mass and velocities? Well, I have the force and I have the time. So this is going to be, I can already stop right there, and I know that I can find the impulse by just using those two numbers. So J equals F delta T, then nothing else matters because I already got it. Force is 10 times 8. I am delivering 800 of impulse. Remember the units are force, newtons, time, seconds, and S. Cool. For part B, we want to know what is the final velocity. And if you go back to the impulse equation right here, final velocity is right there. So I can simply write J all the way to the left because I have J, and then this stuff all the way to the right because I want V final, right? So and when you're building an equation, there's a left and right. One side needs to be what you have, and the other side what you don't have, or at least you can only have one unknown. So I have J equals M V final minus V initial. V initial is zero, so this becomes even simpler. J equals M V final. So V final is J over M. J is 800, M is 50, and if you divide the two, you get 16 meters per second. Okay, so these are the two final answers. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. Let me know if you're stuck in anything. Got a practice problem here for you to try. Give it a shot. Let's see if you get it.